Math team, for orals, we're doing linear congruences out of section 4.4. .4. And we're looking at page 82, and I've just got this book in front of me. And uh, I'd like to just solve some basic linear congruences. I think that's a, a really uh, important skill that very well could show up as part of... Uh, some oral problems. So let's see here. If I gave you 25x is congruent to 15 mod 29, you know, as we look at this, um, one of the things we have to be uh, very much aware of is that you are allowed to divide uh, a linear congruence by a set number, uh, but you got to remember it, it very well could affect the mod. Uh, as I'm looking at 25x and 15, I'm thinking I can divide by a 5, and we can. If we divide by 5, we'll have 5x is going to be congruent to 3. But please do understand that there is the possibility that the mod would change. Here, thank goodness, uh, we don't have to worry about that being the case. Uh, the reason, of course, is 29 is not divisible by 5. And uh, if, if it would, of course, we'd be changing our mod as well. We're going to see that happen soon enough. But regardless, you know, if you can get a much simpler problem, of course, that's preferable. It's good. Uh, but as we're looking at this, I, I hope you're also noticing, I just want to show you some tricks here, too. Uh, as we're looking at this 3, of course, we have some choices on, on things that we can do. We can either add or subtract multiples of 29 to 3. And here's a, a cool little feature about linear congruences. I, I think a lot of times students avoid working with negatives, but we certainly could. Look, if we subtracted 3 minus 29, uh, you know, of course, we would get a negative 26. And if we'd subtract 29 yet again, uh, I think you could see you'd get negative 55. Now, if you were to do that, by the way, you certainly could do that. You might wonder why. It, I can look at that 3 by adding or subtracting a, an appropriate number of, of 29s here uh, because I might just find a friendly multiple of 5, and I have. I'm going to divide both sides by 5 right now. And again, I don't have to worry about changing my mod. And hey, look at that. Right now you can see that we've got uh, x is congruent to negative 11 mod 29. And then, of course, you could think, well, is that a legitimate answer? Well, of course, you know, I'll tell you what, though, if we added 29 to it, uh, we could then write it in a maybe more familiar form. X is congruent to 18 mod 29. So this is a, a little bit different uh, measure of solving. Uh, and it's certainly not the only way. There's inspection. There's so many other ways that you can proceed. But, you know, this is kind of slick. This is kind of cool. And I want you to see this. Now, by the way, I forgot to address something earlier, and I really should have. Uh, the greatest common divisor of 25 and 29 is 1. We were talking about this going over things. Uh, in the textbook, the GCD is 1, and that means also, of course, 1 certainly divides 15. 1 goes into 15. Uh, so we know, in fact, there will be a unique solution, and in fact, our unique solution, we're going to have one unique solution uh, right here, and uh, that's going to be x is congruent to 18. Uh, another way we could write this the way our author was writing it is to say it's 18 plus our, our mod divided by that, uh, you know, greatest common uh, divisor here of 1 with a t. 
So x would be 18 plus multiples of 29. Uh, you know, here's an alternate way of writing it. Uh, but this solution in terms of a mod would be just as good too. Of course, we'd have x is congruent to 18 mod 29. Why do we write it really parametrically like this? x equals 18 plus 29t. Uh, that's, of course, uh, if you'd like to generate more answers. Very often you might have uh, more than one solution. So uh, let me flip back over here in our book. I guess uh, we have for B, maybe we can go to 1B here and just keep going. I think this can be helpful to, to look at some of these problems. 5X is congruent to 2 mod 26. And uh, again, maybe we should check and see if there is an answer. By the way, that's very important. My goodness, you can save yourself a whole lot of work if you quickly realize there wouldn't be a solution. Greatest common divisor of 5 and 26 is 1. I'll tell you what, you know that 1 is going to uh, divide anything. It certainly divides the 2. Uh, so there is one solution here. There's going to be a definite answer. So uh, right here, we're not going to start by dividing things. But, you know, maybe we could piggyback on what we just did a moment ago. Uh, you could think, hey, could we perhaps add multiples of 26 or subtract multiples of uh, 26 here? And, uh, you know, honestly, you could go either uh, route. Uh, you, you certainly uh, could do that. You're looking for a multiple of 5. Um, you know, kids can really run away from that negative idea, and maybe we should see if we can do that again. Let's see if we can. I think we can, just previewing. You have 2 minus 26, you'd get negative 24, and if you subtracted 26 again, I saw that 6 and 4 coming up in my head, you'd get negative 50. So the 2, you could say, well, what is 2 equivalent to? Uh, wow, it's, it's equivalent to negative 50. And sometimes kids look at that and they'll say, I don't know about that. But look, if we just did a whole separate problem here, a bold claim, could 2 really be the same thing as negative 50 in mod 26? A lot of times kids will say, I don't know if that's true. Well, remember, we'd say if you subtract these two, well, let's see, 2 minus negative 50 is uh, positive 52. If 26 divides that, well, albeit it does. Look at that. 52 is a multiple of 26. So, you know, what you're doing is is valid. Um, you know, could we have continued to add 26 until we get a nice multiple of 5? Well, yeah. Uh, you could do that too. Dividing by 5 right now, well, my goodness, I think you could see that the left side you get x. Uh, then you get, what, negative 10. And uh, here we go. We could just add a 26 to negative 10, and you'd get 15. So really, uh, negative 10 is equivalent to 15. This is in mod 26. But here we go again. We can say, well, we could write it this way, which is, you know, fine. You know, that's in, in mod form. Uh, if you would have had multiple answers. You know, when your GCD is just a 1, hey, that's great. You know, you're just going to have one solution, and you just found it. Uh, but you might wonder what that solution would look like being written out in a parametric generation. You could say x equals 15 plus, and you've got your mod, 26 divided uh, by that 1, and you have a t. Uh, so you're more or less saying it's 15 plus multiples of 26. Uh, it would be an altered way to write that out. All right. Well, you know, so far we've really lucked out with some of these problems. Let's maybe take a look at 1C. Because I think just looking at that one, that's going to look a little bit more involved. Take a look at this one. 6X is congruent to 15 mod 21. You know, you could divide some things out for sure. You could definitely divide. I think a lot of times kids will say, I want to divide by 3. And you can. You, you definitely can. 
And, uh, you know, maybe we should check and see if there's even an answer first. You know, what's the GCD of uh, 6 and 21? What's the greatest common divisor that we could ever have? Well, my goodness, it's going to be a 3, isn't it? 3 is the largest number that simultaneously divides 6 and 21. And 3 divides 15. So there are three solutions here you know we've, we've kind of avoided a lot of this and uh, you know maybe right now this is a great problem to deal with some of these other issues I definitely wanted to to do a problem like this right now so look if we divide this uh, congruence by three you could see well you'd get 2x and over here you'd have a 5 but you have to change your mod don't you this is going to be mod 7 now right and, uh, you know, could we solve by inspection? Well, of course we could. We actually definitely could. Uh, and it, it wouldn't take you too long to be able to find a, an answer, honestly. Uh, eventually, just by doing some uh, guessing and checking, you'd be able to be fine. Uh, but I want to show you something really cool, too. I mean, just like before, we could subtract a 7, we could add a 7 too. You know, we haven't been adding as much. You could say, well, what's 5 plus 7? Well, it's 12, isn't it? 5 right here would be exactly the same thing as 12 in mod 7. And then what? Well, right now you can see that you can divide everything by a 2. Look at that. It, rather than go by inspection, you might be able to say, hey, there we go. X is going to be congruent to uh, 6. So that's great you, you found an answer but remember our answers ultimately we would maybe like to go back to mod 21 so tell you what we can go back to the way the author was writing this out we found a solution that's six but our mod was 21 this GCD was three and sure enough would you look at this 21 divided by three is a seven so Look, if we had t equals 0, we'd have x is equal to 6. If we had t equals 1, we'd have x is equal to 13. And if t was equal to 2, well, that's 14 plus uh, 6. That would be 20, wouldn't it? Uh, so, you know, here are three answers, mod 21, mind you, uh, that you could uh, come up from this generator. Now, if you were asked to write it out in terms of a mod, you could say, well, uh, we could say uh, x, well, of course you could just say x is congruent to, to 6, x is congruent to 13, x is congruent to uh, 20. All of these would be in mod 21. Uh, you know, our answer previously was good. Even that's what the author did. Uh, you know, just writing these three out, you could say 6, 13, 20, and mod 21. Okay, so, you know, regardless how you do it, I just wanted to show you, of course, uh, what's happening. Uh, we're running out of time, but tell you what, I'd like to do 1D. And uh, there's a reason why I was getting so emphatic about always checking if there's a solution. Let's do that real quickly. Uh, let's find the greatest common divisor of 36 and 102. And, uh, wow, the greatest common divisor, uh, 36, wow, if, if you give this a few moments thought, I, I believe uh, you can see very quickly the greatest common divisor here would have to be a 6. 36 doesn't have a lot of numbers that divide into it. Of course, you know, 6 does, 18 does, 36 does. I think you can see 36 doesn't go into 102, neither does 18. But 6 doesn't divide 8. There's no solution. So just wanted to show that to you. Uh, you could spend a lot of time trying to you know, do uh, cute things here, dividing things out, looking at, at inspection and so forth. But you know what? 1D plain and simply doesn't have a solution at all. Well, we'll pick up again and we'll try to uh, have a few other uh, types of problems too.